I have been waiting all week to tell you about this no-bake chocolate pumpkin pie. It is so good. Oh my gosh, it's decadent. It's deep, dark chocolate goodness. It's creamy. The date nut crust is awesome. You are going to have such a good time sticking this in your pie hole. The recipe comes from this book, Plant Pure Nation, the cookbook. Yeah, it's a movie and there's a cookbook that goes along with it. Yeah, awesome. And it's written by Kim Campbell. Oh yeah, she's going to be my next new best friend. Okay, let's get started with this recipe. Okay, we've got to make the date nut crust first. Okay, so we need one cup of pitted dates, which I counted out. That's 15 large dates. Makes about one cup. Just in case, you know, you need to know if you have enough dates before you get started. That's how much I counted up. Okay, and then next, we need uh, some coconut flakes. Now, the coconut flakes that I had on hand were really large. So I said, you know what? They're too big to go into the date nut crust. So I'm going to go ahead and process them first and get them smaller. So this is not part of the recipe. This is just part of me. All right, so um, I needed a half a cup of flakes. And I'm just pulsing these with my awesome Breville food processor to get them um, finer. Oh yeah, I love my Breville. I probably shouldn't love my appliances, but I do. Okay, see, and I, now, I mean, that's, that's not as small as like shredded coconut, but it's small enough, I figured, to go in this recipe. Now, I have never made a date nut crust before. I've been plant-based for almost four years now, and this is my first time to make a date nut crust. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, living this right in front of you. Okay, and then we need some walnuts. And, uh, you know, I've been real good to kind of, you know, turn down the dial on my nut consumption. But um, I said, this is totally worth it, right? It's this, this recipe just, I can't not get around the nuts here. So um, we need one and a half cups of walnut pieces. Look at me, I'm just like, no more. Don't, don't overstuff. Just get what you need. Move on. I don't have anything against nuts. I've just, I went crazy with nuts for a while, and I think they, they were starting to stick. You know how Dr. McDougall says, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Well, I just didn't want to wear any more cashews or walnuts on my butt, so I said, let's just take a break for a while. Okay, next we need some cinnamon. So I have one teaspoon of cinnamon. Is that right? No, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm going to post all the uh, ingredients and the how-to in the video description below. So look for it there and you'll also see it in the comment section. And you'll find it on my website and all that kind of stuff. All over the place. Alright, so here, this, is, this part was kind of a, you know, new territory for me. I wasn't sure if I should run the food processor like just constantly or pulse it to get it to some date nut consistency or, you know, crusty consistency. So here, this was just kind of letting the food processor spin and I, I probably went about a minute and that wasn't long enough. The nuts and everything hadn't broken down enough. The dates were breaking down, but I could still tell that the this was going to be a crumbly crust and I wanted the crust to stay together. I wanted some moisture in there and I was afraid that maybe the crust wasn't going to be moist enough, you know, and I was tempted to add a little water, but I said, you know what, I'm going to keep pulsing. I'm going to pulse for a while and see if I, if pulsing the dates and the nuts together will give me a better consistency. So I did that. I mean, I, I edited here, but I probably pulsed for a full minute to get those nuts and dates broken down more, okay? And I was getting a much better uh, result pulsing for a full extra minute. So look at here, I'm trying to show you that there's a lot of moisture there. I'm really glad that I didn't add any water or try to add any more vanilla extract to, you know, add moisture because it did come together. Look at there, see there? I'm squeezing it and it's staying together. There's not a lot of crumble going on. So I said, okay, I think this is, a good place to stop. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Okay, then you get your pie plate out. And, and 
man, here's another moment that was like, uh, I'm not sure that this is going to work. Look at all that. Look at all those. I mean, that looks like a lot. I'm like, I think my pie plate is too small. This is what I was thinking. I thought, oh, my, maybe I should have gotten a deep dish pan. Uh, so I just said, okay, let me just go with it, right? Because the camera's rolling. I'm, you know, here, here we go. We're going to live this together. So I just tried to even out the, the ingredients here, the mixture, and, uh, you know, so I could, and, and then just start pressing it together. Because it's really crumbly, right? But I just kept working it. And you know how it is? Things are kind of kind of unfamiliar. You're feeling a little wobbly, feeling a little shaky. Confidence is, uh, but then somewhere something happens, and you start getting into it, and you're like, oh yeah, okay, I understand. It's working. All right, I got the groove. I'm from, okay. I feel the. I'm getting into the crust. It's feeling pretty good. It's coming together. Confidence is building. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. And then here I just found my mojo, and I was like, all right, here we go. Just smooth it out. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I got it. I'm down. Now, now it's time to work the ends of the crust. Oh, and the side. You know, when you're going around, be sure to press into that corner on the bottom and make sure you've got good contact there. Now here, see, here you go. Now my grandmother, she's, she's, uh, what do they call that? You know, she's like working through me. This is all my, all the times I ever watched Meemaw, you know, pinch her pie crust and she's making pies. That's Meemaw right there. Pinching the pie crust. Oh, yeah. Sometimes she used a fork. But, of course, the fork didn't work here. That's not going to work. But I thought, okay, pinching the the date, nut, date nuts here will uh, give me a little bit of edge. And then I, I didn't, I decided I'd try to push it up a little. See if I couldn't get a little taller edge on that. Because I, I haven't made the filling yet. I have no idea how much um, the filling is going to fill the pie. So I said, well, better make a little red. A, you know, a ridge, a higher ridge. All right, there you go. I'm done. I'm done playing with the date nut crust. Ta-da! Of course, I couldn't stop playing with it. That's the artist in me. I can't stop fidgeting. You know how it is. Keep, okay, leave it alone. We got it, Jill. Okay, stop. Stop. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. There you go. There you go. Yay! Date nut crust done. Okay, so just throw that in the refrigerator and then move on to the filling. Okay, so for the filling, we need one cup of vegan or non-dairy chocolate chips, semi-sweet chocolate chips. Now, some of y'all are going to cringe when I say this, but I pop my chocolate in the microwave at 70% 70, 70 power for about a minute. And uh, sometimes that's just enough to get the chocolate chips melted, and then sometimes I have to pop it back in the microwave for another 10 to 20 seconds at 70% power, and then it gets the chocolate warm enough where I can stir it up and it just becomes this nice goo. Look at that. Mmm. Yum, 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 yum. Wonderful. And it always looks like the chocolate chips haven't melted all the way through, but if you just keep working it, you know, working the chocolate, they just start, they break down a little bit more. And there you go. All right, and then we just transfer the chocolate to the food processor. And I didn't even bother cleaning my food processor from making the date nut crust. I was like, well, this is all going, you know, same place. So, so I just um, move my chocolate over. Mm, I wish you could have been on the other side of that and seen all that chocolate just falling into the, the processor bowl. It's so good. So good. Okay, and then next we need some uh, natural unsweetened cocoa powder. Which, this really makes the pie have a dark flavor. If you are a dark chocolate fan, you're going to appreciate this part. I will admit that it at first it seemed too dark. Like, I, I really thought that leaving the chocolate powder out would still make a good pie crust. But uh, I got used to it on the second day. All right, and then next we need a whole can of pumpkin. A fourth cup of maple syrup. Mmm, look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then we just need a few spices. Uh, some cinnamon. About a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. An eighth teaspoon of nutmeg. 
and an eighth teaspoon of ground cloves. Oh, yeah. Oh, and a little salt. Uh, how much salt? A fourth teaspoon of salt. Yay. Okay, and then we're just going to blend all that up. And I wanted you to see that um, it was interesting when I was blending this in the food processor uh, that it just looks like it's not smooth, but it really is. Check this out. Oh, I had to stop. Hold on. You, you, and I had to stop and scrape down the bowl. Now, on that cocoa powder, I want to go back to that for a minute. On that cocoa powder, I admit that when I tasted the filling, I could taste the cocoa powder. I could taste the powderiness of the cocoa powder at first. I mean, that was me just like, you know, tasting it off the spoon. But that goes away. So don't freak out about that, okay? Um, and it gets richer the next day. It's just really good. Totally trust this recipe. It turns out great. But at first, it's like, mm, I don't know. But you need to let this pie, like, set up. Okay, now check this out. See the filling? See how it kind of looks um, bumpy on the top? But it really is smooth. The food processor will do the job in blending the, the filling. Now, you could probably get it looking smoother if you put it in a, you know, a drink blender. But I'm here to tell you that if you do all this in one food processor bowl, all will turn out well. And it is good. That is really, really good. I cannot wait to make this again. I need something awesome to happen so that I can make this pie again. Okay, now the pie crust was in the refrigerator just setting up while I was making the filling. So, um, and then just, I just got that out. And then we're, you just transfer the filling right to the pie crust. Oh my gosh. Waste not, want not. Mmm. So good. And I even thought that I might have too much filling to go in my pie crust. I had that thought too when I was dumping this stuff in. I was like, oh, what am I going to do with all this extra pie crust? I don't need it anywhere special. And I was like, maybe I could turn it into a pudding. I mean, I was like, all these things were flying through my mind of how I was going to use any, the, any leftover that I would have. But once I scraped that bowl clean, I had enough. I mean, it turned out that that was just a perfect amount of pie filling. Mm, so good. It kind of looks fancy. See, I used all the pie filling. Oh, yeah. It kind of looks weird right there. All right. Now, yeah, okay. now I was coming to that moment. All right. This is a pie that I'm serving at a potluck, and I need it to look pretty. I don't know why I was putting that pressure on myself, but I was. I was like, this has to be the most beautiful pie in the world. So what am I going to make the top of the pie look like? <laughs> so I was playing around, and I was like, how am I going to, you know, am I going to swoosh? Am I going to make little dollops? And then somewhere I saw that stroke. I saw this stroke with my, my spatula, and I was just using the square point of my spatula, and I was making this little sweeping you know, comma, or a parenthesis. That's what I was thinking, a parenthesis. So I was making parentheses with my spatula. And then I was like, oh, there it is. There's my pie. There's my fancy pie. There it is. Yay, my fancy moment. Yay. Mmm, yes. I licked the spoon. I, that was all mine. Okay, so then I popped it in, into the freezer for a while. And I let it sit in the freezer for about an hour. That was just kind of my, because I had, I didn't have much time in my afternoon. In the recipe, it says to let the, ref, let it sit in the refrigerator at least four hours. So if you have that much time, take it. I did not. So I popped mine in the, in the freezer for an hour. Okay. And then from here, you know, here comes the next wave of pressure that I had. And then how to decorate it. Ooh. And in the, in the book, uh, Kim had drizzled it with a little more melted chocolate and put like a slice of strawberries on top. And I was like, oh, that looks pretty. And I was like, well, I want to do something else. So um, I was like, how do I make this extra, extra special? And how could I use these strawberries to kind of help portion out this pie for people that are going to come by and, you know, get a slice? And so, um, so, so, so I was just playing around with the strawberries right here. And I figured out I wanted to make this kind of heart shape or, you know, spear point strawberry shape and just line the pie crust this way so so I just started cutting up strawberries that were about the same size and started laying them along the edge oh. and I, I thought okay each pie crust each pie slice will have a strawberry on it and that will help people you know or help me cut the pie up in even in even sizes look at that oh, and then I found my biggest 
strawberry and I just sliced it up to the top, but I let the top just hang there. Oh, look. Oh, you so pretty. Uh, so good. Look at the date nut crust. Oh, oh my God, you're so pretty. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to eat you again. Oh, and here I am at the pre show potluck with my friends. Yeah, we had so much fun. And there's Sarah and there's Patty. You see her name tag? There's Patty. She was the hostess of the pre show potluck. I'm so thank you, Patty, for throwing that. And here is a picture of me, Sarah, throwing me out, pushing me outside my comfort zone. And she asked me to introduce the movie at the movie theater that night. Oh my gosh, I, I wanted to throw up. I really did. I was like, are you kidding me? And she was like, no, we need you to do it. And she was all like, hey, hey, hey. and I was thinking, oh my God. But I got through it. I did okay. Yay. Thanks, Sarah. No, it's so cool. Okay. All right. I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all go make this pie because it's awesome. Make it for a special, special occasion. Is somebody having a birthday? Something's happening. Something awesome is happening. You have to make this pie. And I would not hesitate to make this pie for Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, it is that awesome. You will wow everybody when you bring this to your potluck or your family gathering or whatever you're going to bring it. You'll be a rock star. Oh yeah. I love y'all. Bye.